Hi, I'm here today to give you some pointers on the uh, excerpt from the second page of the Sites Concerto. Um, number four. So we start with this beautiful melody and there are a couple things that are going to be really key. We want to watch our bow distribution and I'm going to have some shifting tips along the way. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're really singing through the whole bow. Now, did you see what I did there? I only used a very small amount of bow for the single eighth note, the A. Okay, and that'll help keep my line really beautiful without any notes sticking out. Okay, you're going to see me do that a lot. All right, the next, now we've got a shift coming up. So third position, old hat, right? So I let go down in first position and I use this open E to bring my hand up to third and drop that finger, okay? So in order to practice this, we can practice to help us get our hand position. All right, get up to third position, find that C sharp, tune it to your open A string. All right, and now I'm gonna memorize that position. I like to just kind of close my eyes and have a little moment of peace as I let my body and my brain learn where that note is. All right, I'm there. Another shift, it's okay to do a little slide there, it's really quite lovely. Now notice here I've got half, half, whole bow. Remember to release on those downward shifts. Whole bow, let it taper. Now, crescendo to the frog. Small bows in the upper half. Totally fine to use a harmonic here. Nice and bright. Do you hear me get a slide up to that note? So when I'm practicing this, I'm going to go... Or, all right, so I'm going to use my guide finger there to make sure my hand really knows where it's going. Now, when I put it back into context, I'm going to let that little bit of slide come through because I think it's lovely. Now, I've got to get to the tip on this note, but it's piano, so I've got to use a very light bow, especially for the G string, and that's kind of hard. All right, so I have to really relax my hand and just open my arm. All right, now here comes the hard left hand position. So these, these chromatics can be a little bit tricky. What we want to do is find the basic chord, the basic hand structure first. So all right, so I'm going to find that and then I like to tune that perfect fourth there. Now one just slides right up under two. Okay, that's what I want you to see you do. Now, what I sometimes see people do and then they get lost on the fingerboard is they'll try to move their hand for this note. And then they're not, their hand isn't sure. This one isn't so hard, but a couple of the others, it could really throw you off. So instead, let's think of that one as just kind of slipping right up under our otherwise really nice hand position. Um, while I've got this angle here, what I like about that hand position, what I want to see are pretty vertical um, first segments of the finger here and almost square knuckles. Now, every hand is different. Every hand's going to look a little bit different. Okay, that's fine. I'm not here. I'm not here, right? Almost vertical first segment, okay? And pretty square, the rest of it. Okay, so. See me tuck up that finger from this angle? Same thing here. Except here, I've got to reach back, right? I don't want to shift back. This is what I was talking about, okay? So I've got my perfect fourth. There's my hand position. And I'm just going to reach back. You know, we have this great knuckle on the index finger that really allows us to reach back like that. All 
Okay, now here, I've got that hand position, and one is just going to tuck right up under two, okay? Now, bow distribution is tricky here, too. We've got all these notes up bow and one quick note down bow. It's really not even. So we have to think very light and fast on the down bow and sustain a bit more in the string on the up bow. And because it has to be such a fast bow, I'm probably going to use my fourth finger if I'm comfortable doing that because it's going to be hard to play that beautifully. Now, if your fourth finger's not working today, totally fine. Use that E string. Just keep it nice and light. Now, there are dots on these notes in some editions. That's fine, but they do not mean off the string, okay? Please don't. Sometimes I see people try to get very fancy with spiccato. Really, all these dots mean is not slurred, okay? And I'm going to use little bitty bows on them because they're little bitty notes. Shoot my bow back out to the tip. Ooh, in that one I had both the high one and the reach back one. Let's look at that from the back. There again, I've got my hand position based around one and three, and two is just gonna tuck right up under there. Again. Sometimes I like to practice the notes out of order like that, it really helps me, if I put them in what I call scale order, um, it helps me learn my hand position, and then I can go put them in any order, and I'm fine. I don't, I don't have any trouble. Okay? So, again, two little bows. Ah, now, trick bowing. So... Um, thankfully, the left hand here is not too hard. With this bowing, you want to do a lot of little martelet strokes all in a row. Now, martelet is defined by a really clear beginning where we grab the string. Not hard, it's just a little violin string. But we grab the string by rotating our arm towards the index finger, okay? And then we give it a little release. All right, so I'm going to, just using this A, I'm going to show you. So watch that right hand motion here, okay? I'll exaggerate just a tiny bit so it shows up well on the camera. I'm going to rotate my whole arm towards my index finger. Now, you know, I've got some weight in the string. And if I try to do it up bow, it doesn't really want to move. But then all of a sudden, I'm going to release that weight for just a split second, and the bow is going to move, okay? All right, here we go. So the weight's in the string, and then it wants to go up bow, but it can't, and now I'm going to release. Great thing to practice. It'll help you with all sorts of bits and pieces of music that you play. Um, but the key is it's not a U-shaped stroke, so it doesn't do this, okay? That would sound like this. All right, we don't want that. What we want is we stop, okay, by rotating. We stop the bow by rotating the hand towards the index finger. We're trying to do an up bow gently. We're trying to do an up bow, and it won't move because we've got all that weight, right, on the bow. And then we allow a little bit of weight to let go, and it, the bow sneaks up, and it sneaks up again. But we're, we're going to keep rotating back, okay? So this is what that looks like in context. to stop and really practice some of these hard hand positions in ways that might feel a little different, okay? Maybe put the notes in a different order. I love practicing runs that are giving me trouble backwards. I always learn something about the arrangement of the notes and what I'm doing with my hand, okay? And remember that in general, lots of notes in a bow are going to get a bigger bow, and single notes that are pretty short are going to get a smaller bow. We forget that sometimes when we're so worried about other things, and it really makes a big difference in the way you sound. All right, good luck.